Y'all got it? Y'all gonna pray with me? Because the enemy been fighting me to get this one out. Verse 30 says, Then Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, We should go up and take possession of the land, for we can certainly do it. Look at somebody like you, a prophet, and say, listen here. Thus saith the Lord, your promise shall come to pass. Come on, turn to somebody else. Tell them, tell them, tell them, tell them. Your promise shall come to pass. Come on, tell one more person so they can get it deep down in their spirit. Your promise shall come to pass. Now give him some promise praise up in here. Hey! 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 Come on the way down. Tell him it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Your promise shall come, little base, to pass. Your promise shall come to pass. I can stay right there. Your promise shall come to pass. Your promise shall come to pass. That promise shall come to pass. That one from the 70s is coming to pass. That one from 1990 is coming to pass. That one from January is coming to pass. The one from last Monday is coming to pass. The one he told you about early this morning is coming to pass. Hit somebody and tell them it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. It is coming to pass. Somebody like, look, 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 you too excited already, man. How can you say that so emphatically, so matter-of-factly, so confidently, so concretely, so unequivocally, so madly? How can you say it? Because it ain't based on somebody else making the promise. It's based on God making the promise. The promise is only as good as the one who makes it. And I don't know about you, my God is better than good. He's not a man that he should lie, and he's not a man that he should change his mind. If God said it's coming to pass, I can give God a shout of praise before it happens, because if he says it, it's as good as all rest. Clap your hands like you're going to clap them off like you already got it. Come on, it's already done. It's all. Look here, let me hurry up. Look, the word here, the text that we have, man of God, is proof positive that God says, if I say it, you might as well set the table. If I tell you I'm about to bless you, you might as well start making room. Just, just clear out the room because you need more space to receive what God has. I ain't just talking stuff. I'm talking faith up in here right now. Somebody ought to just get ready. You ought to just enlarge your capacity to receive what God has. Okay, what's the promise? What's the promise? Look over at Numbers 13, verse 1. Come on, come on. What's the promise? What, what type of promise are you talking about? Do what he says. The Lord said to Moses in 13 verse 1, Send some men to explore the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the Israelites. Send some folk to explore the stuff which I am giving to the Israelites. Oh, which I am giving to the folk at the 11 o'clock service which I am giving to the new faith family, which I am giving to the folk who are sitting on your row, 
which I am giving to those who would believe that it's on the way. And he says, I am giving it to them. I am giving it to you. I am giving it to you. It's on the way. I'm giving it to you. I'm giving it to you. What I told you, I'm giving it to you. I'm sending it next day. I'm giving it to you. Before the end of the day, it's on the way. I'm giving it to you. It's coming today. I'm giving it to you. Y'all need to understand, God is so cool that God will reiterate what he said until we get what he said, and he'll say it again and again until we get it in our spirit and get what he said. I don't know about you, but sometimes I'm slow because I let circumstances get in the way of what I believe about what God said. And then God said, let me rewind it and say it to you again. The children just sang it a little while ago. Turn to Genesis 12. Genesis 12. Stay with me, all right? Verse 1 says, the Lord had said to Abram, go from, leave your country, your people, and your daddy's house, and go to the land that I will show you. He says, I promise, I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make you, your name great, and you will be a blessing. Don't worry about your enemies. I will bless those who bless you. And whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through. Baby, you talking about a promise. Somebody holler, that's my promise. Come on, tell somebody else, that's your promise. Uh, holler back at him, tell him, I receive that one right there in the name of Jesus. I I receive, that's my promise right there. I'm about to be more better blessed. I receive it, amen? But even before he delivered them from captivity in Egypt, God reiterated the same thing again and again. He said, I'm going to get it to you till you get it. Look over at Exodus 3. Come on, walk with me. We're going to treat you a little while this morning. He's, look at chapter 3 of Exodus, verse 7. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my folk in Egypt. I've heard them crying out because of their slave drivers. And I am concerned about their suffering. Somebody holler, God's concerned about me. Verse 8, he says, So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land into a good and sweet. Y'all be reading your Bible too fast. A land flowing with milk. Wait, wait, wait. God says, I'm about to bring you up out only so I can bring you into. Oh, y'all ain't hear me. He says, I don't bring you up out just so you can come out. I bring you up out because I'm about to take you in. If anybody in here has been brought up out of anything, you ought to give God some glory because if he brought you out, you might be on pause right now, but he's fencing to take you in. He always brings you up out because he's about to take you up in. Is, is that the word for anybody up in here? Somebody holler, I'm coming out, but I'm about to go in. I done came up out of it, but I'm about to go into a new dimension. I'm going into it. Oh, somebody ought to give God praise. Because you're going in this. Uh, wait, 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 wait. To the Israelites' daughter who were making bricks without straw. Under the yoke of bondage for 400 years. And enslaved by Pharaoh. God tells them again in Exodus 6, verse 6. Look at it for me. Come on. It says, therefore, say to my peeps, I am the Lord. And I will bring you out from under the yoke of your slave master. I will free you from being slaves to them. Check him out. And I will redeem you. How? With an outstretched arm and with mighty acts of judgment. I will take you as my own people and I will be your God. Then you gonna know that I am the Lord your God who brought you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians 
and I will bring you to the land I swore with uplifted hands to give to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, your descendants. I will give it to you as a possession. Why? Because I am the Lord. God was saying it to the children of Israel. And he's saying it to the Hebrews at the 11 o'clock service that I will set you free from what has been keeping you from your destiny. He says, as a matter of fact, I've already set you free. I've already redeemed you. I've already paid for your mistakes. I'm going to pay for the mistakes you're going to make. I've already paid for what has you bound. I've already set bail for you. I've already paid bail for you. I've already delivered you from what's been holding you. I've paid for your addictions. I've paid for your habits. I've paid for your mistakes. I've paid for your bad decisions. All you need to do is receive that I done set you free so that you can run to the next level. That, uh, wait, 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 wait. Somebody holler, I'm already set free. How am I going to do it with a mighty outstretched hand? I'm going to cast judgment on people who've been against you. Look at somebody say, listen now, listen to what he's saying. Let him or her who has a, he a ear hear what the Spirit is saying to you. Y'all, why I keep saying you got to listen? Because somebody can be preaching to you. And you hear it, but you don't listen. If you don't put it in your spirit and walk with it, you ain't done nothing but waste two hours of your life. Well, why you, why you got to talk? Because even though Pastor Moses was talking, in Exodus 6 and 9 it says, Moses reported this to the Israelites, but they did not listen to him. Why didn't they listen? Because of their discouragement and their harsh labor. We become realists at the wrong time. The reason many of us don't get excited when God says it's coming because we've been waiting so long, we don't believe it's going to come to pass. But God says, I said it. He said, ain't nothing wrong with me. He said, the problem is you keep navel gazing at your circumstances. And when you look at that, it stops your ears up because you're listening to the yappity app of what folk who are telling you who ain't never done nothing that I've ordained for you to do in the first place. Oh, y'all ain't hear me up in here. I've told you before, I'm going to tell you again. Where you are right now is not where you're going to be. What you're going through right now is not what God is taking you to. I dare you to give God some praise from the balcony to the bottom floor that is already on the way. See, look, 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 look. See, see, here's the deal. I thank God that God doesn't wait on my faith to catch up with his favor. No, -uh. I'm, I'm glad that God don't wait to make a move, uh, that he got to wait on my faith to make a move. I'm glad that God makes a move, uh, and when he's moving, he allows my faith to catch up with what he's doing, because if he had to wait on my faith, I'd still be where I was at square one. But because God starts delivering me from my Egypts before I even believe that he go, oh, y'all ain't hearing me. Don't y'all know that's what happened in the Bible? Before the, uh, before the Israelites even believed God, God already started putting his judgment against the slave masters. He already started putting out the ten plagues and the frogs and the fire and killing the firstborn. He delivered them from debt even before they believed. What am I saying? They were poor. They were making bricks without straw. But by the time they left Egypt, God made the Egyptians favorably disposed to the slaves so that everything they asked for, the Egyptians had to give it to them. They didn't have no clothes. But when they left, they had gold on. They had silver on. They Come on. They had red bottom shoes on. Come on, y'all. They had cattle. They had stock. Anybody hear what I'm saying up in here? 
God says, if you don't believe me, I'm still God. If you doubt me, I'm still God. I'll let you go across the Red Sea on dry land. And then when your enemy try to come across, I'll drown him in the Red Sea. I'll help you moving through darkness with a pillar of light that you didn't even pay your light bill. But I will give you light so you can see your way out of darkness. He said, and then when you're in the wilderness, because you turned an 11-day journey into a 40-day craziness, I'm still going to tell you that I got you, and I still got promise. Look, y'all, somebody up here in a wilderness space because of stuff you brought on yourself. And God said, you need to quit tripping and forgive yourself right now because even though you're in a crazy space, that does not mean that you are not a child of promise. I don't care if you sit in the back hiding. God said, I know you out of all the people that are in this room. I know the mistakes you made. I knew what you were going to do before you did it. You don't know the mistakes that the preacher made, and I'm still using him. He said, then let me tell you, if I can use him, I can still use you. If I got promise for him, I still got promise for you. If I can pick him up, I can still pick you up. I wish you'd give him some pickup praise in here like you believe that God is about to do it. Look, 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 look. In chapter 13, verse 1, he says, I'm still going to give you the land. I'm still going to give you the land. You wasn't a good steward over it the last time I gave it to you, but I'm still going to give you the land. You blew it the last time, but I'm still going to bless you because I am God. Okay. See, here's the thing. You got to get this in your spirit real good. God says, I done promised you some stuff. You know I promised it to you. It ain't came yet. But let me help you tell you why. Because promises come with provisions, mm, stipulations, uh, pre-qualifying matters, uh, preparatory actions that put you in position for the promise to run you over. What are you talking about? Turn over to Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28. Mm, mm, mm. The first thing you have to do, A, is there must be obedience to his instructions. Uh -huh. Look at verse 1. It says, if you fully obey, not partially obey, but if you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully follow all his commands I give you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations on earth. All these blessings will come upon you and accompany you if you obey the Lord your God. He said, look here, you're going to be blessed in the city and you're going to be blessed in the country. You're going to be blessed in Chicago and blessed in Madison. The fruit of your womb will be blessed, and the crops of your land, and the young of your livestock, the calves of your herds, and the lambs of your flocks, your basket and your kneading crop will be blessed. You will be blessed when you come, and you're going to be blessed when you go. Here's somebody say, I'm blessed going and coming, blessed going and coming. You ain't got to worry about no enemies, because the Lord will grant that the enemies who rise up against you will be defeated before you. They will come at you from one direction, but they're going to have to scram from you in seven directions. The Lord will send a blessing on your bank account, on your savings account, on your money market, on your 401k, and on everything you put your hand to. The Lord your God will bless you in the land he is giving you. The Lord will establish you as his holy people as he promised you on oath if you keep the commands of the Lord your God and walk in his way. Then all the people on earth will see that you are called by the name of the Lord and they'll be afraid of you. You ain't got to be afraid of nobody. They'll back up off of you. The Lord will grant your abundant prospect. Is there anybody here want these blessings right here that the children were singing about? I dare you to give him some praise and tell God, God, I'm going to do what you tell me to do. 
Look, the Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice because when you obey God, you set yourself up for a more better blessing. I don't know about you, but when I look at stuff my flesh wants to do, and I look at what God is telling me to do. I said, my flesh will bless me for a minute, but God's obedience will bless me for a lifetime. This is stupid. This makes sense. This is natural. This is supernatural. This is part-time. This is full-time. Do I have anybody up in here want to be blessed full-time and not part-time? Pastor, people say full-time, full-time, full-time. Minister Phil, God said, if you obey me, I'm going to bless you full time. He says, B, if you want the promises to come your way, you must continue to participate in the process until the promise is manifested. You got to participate in the process. You got to participate in the process. Look at chapter 13, verse 2. The Lord said to Mo, send some men. Y'all go on and explore the land of Canaan. Wait, y'all just stop right there. I don't know about you, but I am honored and humbled that God would choose to partner with me in my own promised blessing. Wait a minute. If in I was God, I would not choose me, knowing how I done messed over some other blessings. But God says, I really want to bless you, and I tap you to partner with me in the process of blessing you because you know how far I done brought you. And can't nobody appreciate what I'm doing for you like you, especially when you work with me and what I'm trying to get to you. So do I have anybody just give God some praise? Thank you for tapping me. Thank you for tapping me. You wasn't chosen on the playground, but God said, I'm choosing you now. Look here. See, you know that God is going to bring your promise to pass, queen. Why? Because he invites you. Somebody holler, he invites me. He invites you to partake of the previews of what he has for you before he even give it to you. Somebody holler, I see something, I see something. Come on, the Spirit of the Lord is saying, I've already spoken some stuff to you. He says, I revealed stuff to you that I've ordained for you. I want you to see it before it comes so you'll recognize it when it shows up. He says, I've shown you some stuff through visions and dreams. I've, I've awakened you in the midnight hour, and you're like, that couldn't have been from God. That's too huge. He said, I'm showing it to you in HD so that you'll know when it shows up, and you'll know that it wasn't nobody but me. You got Anybody expecting God to do something? I don't know about you, but I'm expecting God to blow your mind, to blow my mind, to blow his mind, to blow her mind. I'm expecting God to do some crazy stuff. 